Okay, thank you for staying for the section. Uh, this talk is about the addition function and bounded depth circuits, and uh, this is a uh, joint work with C Chain and uh, Rocco Servideo from Colombia. Uh, so in the first part, I'll uh, mention a result about uh, exponential weights in monotone majority circuits, and in the second part, a uh, consequence for uh, AC0. Okay. So let's start. Uh, recall that a Boolean function f is a weighted threshold function if there are integer or weights w1 to wm and a threshold t such that f of x is 1 if and only if this weighted sum is at least t. And here is a picture. Uh, this means that there is some hyperplane that separates the zero inputs from the one inputs of the function. Okay, so this is a well-known definition, and it goes by different names, such as half spaces and uh, linear threshold functions, etc. Okay, now you're also very familiar with this. Uh, if we compose many of these threshold gates, then we arrive at threshold circuits, and. Uh, for this talk, I'm going to measure the size of a threshold circuit as the number of gates in the circuit. And layers is uh, what you uh, are familiar with. So this one has uh, size 10. Okay. So I don't care about the weights inside each individual threshold gate here. Okay. And uh, you know that the threshold circuits, they are one of the frontiers in complex theory today. Uh, it's a simple model. Uh, but uh, the power uh, remains uh, mysterious for us. For instance, uh, it's open if uh, we can solve, let's say, direct density connectivity using constant depth polynomial size threshold circuits. Okay. However, uh, we have uh, some uh, relative success in understanding the role of large weights in the gates of the circuits. Okay, so let me tell you um, about it in a second. So. Before, let me just introduce the following notation. I'm going to use majority circuits for exactly the same model, but here I care about the weights inside each gate. Okay. So for instance, if we have a threshold gate like this, the weight of this gate is just the sum of the absolute values of uh, the coefficients. Okay. So, and uh, we're going to measure the size of majority circuit by the total weight in the circuit. So uh, results from the 90s uh, show that if you start with uh, these threshold gates and they have bounded depth and po a polynomial number of gates, then we can simulate them with uh, bounded depth majority circuits of polynomial size. So in other words, we can reduce uh, the exponential weights to polynomial weights, okay? And the depth is, uh, blows up by some constant. And uh, subsequent work uh, has shown that uh, actually in, in this simulation we can start with depth D threshold circuits and get depth D plus one majority circuits, okay? This was a non-constructive proof. And uh, next year, Goldman and Karpinski uh, gave a constructive simulation for this reduction. And uh, uh, after this, uh, other works have uh, simplified or improved size parameters in this reduction. Now, Goldman and Karpinski, back in 93, they observed the following. If the original threshold circuit is monotone, which means that the weights are positive inside each gate, then this simulation that reduces the weights from exponential to polynomial will produce uh, majority circuits with negative weights. Okay. And they asked, is there a monotone transformation or this introduction of negative weights, uh, this is inherent in this transformation? Uh, so what was known about this question? In 92, Hofmeister showed the following. There is just a single uh, monotone threshold gate with large weights, such that you cannot simulate with two layers of monotone majorities. Okay? If you want to have a simulation like this, then you need the weights to be uh, 2 to the square root of n. And uh, uh, the function used by Hofmeister is actually computed by depth three uh, monotone majority circuits. So uh, in trying to understand this question asked by Goldman Karpinski, uh, one of our main difficulties was really uh, figuring out in which direction uh, it went to. So it wasn't clear for us before we started this project that it was a source of difficulty. Uh, we look at some of the proofs and try to make them monotone, and we couldn't do it. And uh, eventually, we arrived at a solution to the problem. And we showed the following. 
There is no efficient monotone simulation in any fixed depth D. Okay. So in other words, uh, there is a single monotone threshold gate with exponential weights. But uh, if you only want to use a constant number of monotone majorities, constant number of layers, then they need to have exponentially large weights. Okay. And the function we use is an extension of the function used by Hofmeister. So it, uh, we call it U sub dn. And uh, it means the following. The input for this function is d natural numbers. They are represented in binary, and it has n bits. And we want to check if the sum of these numbers is at least 2 to the n. And addition is a highly non-monotone function. But since here we are checking if it's at least 2 to the n, this, this definition gives a <coughs> monotone function. Okay. So here's a picture representing this function. We have these uh, d rows, each one containing one of the numbers. And we have the n columns. So we want to add an app and check if this addition produces some carry bit. OK, so this is the most significant bit. And here is like to the end. And of course, this uh, can be represented by a single threshold gate, which just converts the binary numbers to decimal and check if it's to the end. So this is like a, a, a very simple threshold circuit. And uh, formally, we established the following theorem. We show that. Any depth D monotone majority circuit computing U D sub N, summing D numbers, must have size uh, 2 to the N to the 1 over D. Okay. Uh, and uh, so therefore, the answer to their question is no. Uh, you cannot have uh, the monotone simulation. And uh, you may ask if this lower bound for this function is optimal. And this is a second result we have in this uh, work, which is uh, there is a matching upper bound. It's, it's not obvious, but you can construct uh, such monotone circuits with the, this way. Okay. So I won't have time to discuss the proof, but this slide is, is here just to say that it's a proof by induction. So uh, what we do is uh, we define some uh, pairs of distributions over the zero inputs and the one inputs. So one inputs, these are uh, going to be numbers with some at least 2 to the n, no inputs, some less than 2 to the n. And we show that these two distributions, they are uh, very hard for small depth circuits. Uh, so for instance, uh, this pair here is going to be very hard for depth 2 monotone majority circuits. And then we're going to do something, and we're going to create new uh, pair of distributions, which are hard now for depth three circuits, and so on. But in this process, we need to, to introduce pairs of pairs of distributions for some technical reasons I won't be able to cover in this talk. OK, so yeah, there is an inductive lemma showing that uh, um, these distributions, they are hard for like larger depth, and that each one is constructed from the previous pairs. And uh, we need to explore in this proof monotonicity and low weights in a crucial way. Okay. OK, so now and in the second part of the talk, I'll show an application of this lower bound in the context of uh, monotonicity and AC0 complexity. Okay. So before, uh, let's just review uh, this concept of monotonicity for Boolean functions. So uh, first, uh, we all know how to define monotone functions. These are functions where if you flip from a 0 to 1 an input bit, then the, not, the output bit uh, can only go from 0 to 1. And uh, this is, uh, we can view this as a semantic definition of this object, which is the Boolean function. And uh, on the other hand, uh, we have uh, the definition of a monotone circuit, which uh, is a form of representing monotone functions. right? And we know that the class of functions computed by monotone circuits is precisely the class of uh, monotone functions. Okay. But Although we have this equivalence, it doesn't mean uh, that, that the complexity is preserved in this equivalence. Okay? So it's not necessarily true that if you start with a fixed monotone function, then the best circuit for that monotone function is a monotone circuit. Okay? And I, Ty, and Gorevci in 87, they were interested in this kind of question, uh, motivated by uh, something in finite model theory, which I won't mention now. And they established the following stronger result, which was enough for them. They prove that there exists a monotone function g from n bits to a bit, such that this function is in AC0. So we have a very uh, shallow and uh, polynomial size circuits for it. But now if you force these AC0 circuits to be monotone, then you need the super polynomial size. Okay. So in, in, intuitively, this means that uh, negations can speed up the bounded depth computation of monotone functions. Okay. 
And if we inspect the proof, it turns out that this function gn is computed by monotone H0 circuits of quasi-polynomial size. So if you, uh, uh, so their approach using this function cannot give you a stronger separation than quasi-polynomial. So th this brings us to a very natural question. Is there an exponential speed-up in bounded zap? Okay. So if we use cancellations or negations, can we uh, compute monotone functions much faster? And the analogous question for arbitrary circuits, uh, it was answered positively by Tardos in 88. Okay. So in the case that there is no uh, bounds on the depth of the circuits, we know that this is true. Negations can give you an exponential speed up. Okay, uh, so our second result is uh, answering the, that question. So indeed, uh, there is a monotone function on n bits such that this function is an H0, and in fact, it is computed by only three layers. And this monotone function requires depth D monotone majority circuits of size roughly 2 to the n to the 1 over D. So compared to uh, the i tiger theorem, uh, this result gives uh, an exponential separation instead of quasi-polynomial. And our hardness is uh, against uh, majority gates instead of and or gates. So it's stronger in these uh, two senses. Okay. And uh, how do we prove this result? Well, we had this monotone uh, function, which is u sub dn. And uh, we already know this function is hard for majority circuit of bounded depth. And uh, to get this theorem, what we do is we uh, just uh, mention the upper bound for this function. And uh, you can actually compute it for small values of k in depth 3. Okay. So it means that even if you have only three layers of computation, if you use uh, negations, you can have the exponential speed up uh, for monotone functions. Okay, so uh, let me just now conclude. Uh, what we have shown is that the addition function is a monotone function, but monotone bounded depth circuits for this function, they are exponentially weaker than general circuits. So it's a very natural function for which this happens. But on the other hand, there are other monotone functions that are very natural, such that uh, the ST connectivity problem with bounded distance. And, uh, and uh, we know now that uh, for this function, uh, monotone bounded depth circuits are essentially optimal. So this is the result I mentioned two, day ago, two days ago. So there are monotone, uh, natural functions, and for some of them, uh, uh, negations, they speed up computation, and for some, they don't. And I think a very interesting direction would be to try to formulate a more general theory to explain when uh, such non-monotone operations can speed up the computation of monotone functions. Thank you. So can you um, even simulate a monotone threshold function in monotone NC1, in, like with monotone formulas? Yeah, actually, uh, we spent a lot of time working on this project. This was one of our original goals, and we couldn't establish this lower bound. So this can be seen as a weaker separation that uh, is related to your question. Still open. Yeah, yeah I, so I believe that for this function UDN, the, if you want polynomial size circuits, then you should have depth log N times log D. That's my guess. Any other questions? This bound for the function decreases with the D, so why is this decreases with uh, You're saying the lower bound is? The lower bound is. Oh, yeah, as, as you have a larger D, there is a way to, to, yeah, as I mentioned, there is an upper bound, and uh, with larger D, there is a certain divide and conquer strategy to compute the function. So, so the optimal is to take D for one, or? Oh, it's because we need uh, the sum of D numbers to prove lower bounds against that D monotone majority circuit. Oh, yeah, I see. So D grows with the lower bound we want to prove. There's no reason for school you could get a 2 omega and a square root and lower bound independently. For, uh, for these functions? Uh, yeah, as far as I know, you, you could have uh, a single function that 
Actually, I think like if it's a monotone in Nancy one, then you can somehow collapse some layers. And this entity one over D is probably going to be present, maybe with a constant there. Right? 